I greet you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, brothers and sisters in Christ. I'm glad that you are able to listen to this message. It's, uh, today's message is, is really about uh, Thanksgiving, Harvest Thanksgiving. Uh, and uh, you look back and see what God has done throughout 2021. And you just sit down and say, let me give this time and opportunity to count all the blessings I've received and then see what the Lord has done. And it is through that reflection that you are able to thank God. So this service is about celebrating what God has done. If you look into the calendar, we are only left now with two months before the end of the year. And you want to thank God for looking after us. Okay, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you. We thank you for everything. We thank you that you continue to shine in our lives. And you are always there and you have been always guiding us. As the people of God, we come to give thanks and praise for your goodness. We come from different places, Father. Different parts of our community. We come to give you thanks, Father, as we join together those who are managing to be in this place, those who are in different places and different times of the day. The most important thing is we are saying God is God. God of goodness and of plenty. He help us to worship you by honoring our past, by giving thanks for the present. And by trusting in the future, we ask this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I'm going to ask Brother Ben to come and do the readings of the Word of God. Please take time to listen to the reading of the Word of God. As Brother Ben is going to do the reading. Praise God, and I hope you're all well this week. And um, I'm just so thankful to God for everything he's doing in my life and thankful to God for everything he's doing in your life too. So uh, as we read the word, um, yeah, let's all be thankful. Uh, I'd like to uh, now read uh, Deuteronomy 16, 10 to 17. Then celebrate the festival of the weeks to the Lord your God by giving him giving a free will offering in proportion to the blessings the Lord your God has given you and rejoice before the Lord your God at the place he will choose as a dwelling for his name. You, your sons and your daughters, your male and female servants, the Levites in your town, and the foreigners, the fatherless and the widows living among you. Remember that you were slaves in Egypt and follow carefully these decrees. Celebrate the festival of the tabernacle for seven days after you have gathered the produce of the threshing floor and your wine press. Be joyful at your festival, you, your sons and daughters, your male and female servants, uh, and the Levites, the foreigners, the fatherless, and the widows who live in your towns. For seven days celebrate the festival to the Lord your God at a place the Lord will choose. For the Lord your God will bless you in all the harvests and in all the work your hand and your joy will be complete. Three times a year all your men must appear before the Lord your God at a place he will choose, at the festival of unleavened bread, the festival of weeks and the festival of the tabernacles. No one should appear before the Lord empty-handed. Each of you must bring a gift in proportion to the way the Lord your God has blessed you. Amen. Uh, Deuteronomy uh, 26, verses 1 to 12. When you have entered the land the Lord your God has given you as an inheritance and have taken possession of it and settled in it, take some of the first fruits of all that you produce from the soil of the land the Lord your God has given you, and put them in a basket. 
and go to the place the Lord your God will choose as a dwelling for his name and say to the priest in office at the time, I declare today to the Lord your God that I have come to the land the Lord swore to our ancestors to give us. The priest shall take the basket from your hand and set it down in front of the altar of the Lord your God. Then you shall declare before the Lord your God, My father was a wandering Ar Aramean, and he went down into Egypt with a few people and lived there and became a great nation, Power, uh, powerful and numerous. But the Egyptians mistreated us and made us suffer, subjecting us to harsh labour. Then we cried out to the Lord, the God of our ancestors, and the Lord heard our voice and saw our misery, toil and oppression. So the Lord brought us up out of Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, with great terror and with signs and wonders. He brought us to this place and gave us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. And now I bring the first fruits of the soil to you, Lord, uh, the, to you, Lord, have given me. Place the basket before the Lord your God and bow down before him. Then you and the Levites and the foreigners residing among you shall rejoice in all the good things the Lord the God has done and given to you and your household. When you have finished setting aside a tenth of all your produce in the third year, the year of the tie, you shall give it to the Levite, the foreigner, the fatherless and the widow, so that they may eat in your towns and be satisfied. Uh, we have a second verse this week, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter six, uh, chapter 9, verses 6 to 8. Uh, remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things at all times, having all that you have need, you will abound in every good work. Praise the Lord. This is the word of the Lord for this week and it's a really good one. So keep uh, giving and uh, thanking the Lord for what he's given you. Uh, we'll get Johnson back to... Um, share his message this week i can't wait and i'm sure you guys are looking forward to it too thanks johnson today i've decided to share with you on the theme harvest thanksgiving celebration harvest thanksgiving celebration i know in different places sometimes people celebrate harvest thanksgiving on different dates or different months but uh, we, at our church, we've decided to celebrate other Thanksgiving on the last week in October, towards the, 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 the last week of October. So I'm going to share with you from what God has given me. The order of thought is this. In due time, Israel would be in possession of the land which the Lord promised to give them. Of this comfortable possession, the gathering of the fruits thereof would be the proof and the sign. In accordance with the well understood law, the first fruits were to be offered to God. In thus offering the first fruits, the offerers were to go up to the house of the Lord and present them to the priest who was to lay them before the altar as offerings to the Lord. This being done, there was to be an aura of, our, of divine mess in pitching the perishing Aramean from whom they were descended. So in watching over the growth of their nation, in delivering them from Egypt, in giving them the good land, and in permitting it to yield them its fruit. In this scenario, Jesus Christ is the priest to whom we should bring the first fruits of all our increase. In other words, we should bring our systematic beneficiaries before Christ and prayerfully deal with it before him. 
He is the mediator for our liberality as well as for every other blessing. This being done, they could then rejoice before the Lord their God in the sacrificial meal which followed. So in the companionship of friends invited to share with them the joy of harvest and in the after use of the bounties of God's providence. For they would be doubly blessed over and over above the temporal masses themselves. They would share the benediction of him. So our God would have us recognize him as the author of all masses. For such he is, without him, no land would yield its increase. Nor would men have power or skill to cultivate the soil. Without him, no sun would shine, no rain descend. It is easy to say that such and such a harvest came in the ordinary course of law. But a confession of our entire dependence upon him, by grateful retrospect of the past, remembering and recalling through what sins God has brought us year by year, by grateful survey of the blessings which are around us now, self-examination to be of service should be comprehensive consciousness as before the Lord thy God. Periodically, you need to evaluate yourself at the end of a year. Every time, you need to evaluate yourself to say, what has God done in my life? The close of a financial year. At birthdays, when you celebrate your birthday, you need to thank God and evaluate what God has done to you. Yet another year, people I've seen saying, yet another year, God has allowed me to live. Even at the end of a week, you need to say and thank God. One day's employment, you need to thank God. So Jesus Christ, our Lord, such thanksgiving as we are, may well even now be offered in the house of the Lord. But they should daily be the promises of grateful and devoted hearts. In private and in the family circle, our song should be, what shall we render to Jehovah, to the Lord, for his benefits towards us? What shall we render to the Lord for all his benefits towards us? So the thing offering should not be only verbal, but practical. There was to be the offering of the first fruit to the Lord. That's why in Deuteronomy chapter 16, it says, your men should not come empty-handed. You should bring something. It's not just saying, thank you, God. When God gave all, what precept be more appropriate? What can be more becoming than to let God have the first of everything? This is the principle which ran through these varied regulations as to first fruits and tithe. Jacob spontaneously said, Of all that God givest, I will surely give the tenth unto thee. In Genesis chapter 28, verse 22. Solomon ages, honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thy increase in Proverbs 3 verse 9, which means you need to honor God. So this wonderful chapter of Deuteronomy speaks to us on this Thanksgiving day of the forms of the presentation of the abundance of a good harvest. So the verses suggest that only those who are in communion with the giver can present the gift with a clean heart. It was the custom at that time of the telling of this story that each year a basket containing first fruits of the soil was to be brought to the central sanctuary and presented to God. So the Bible tells us that the first fruits of, for the people described in Deuteronomy were crops such as barley, grapes, wheat, figs, pomegranates, olives, and dates. So the people were to take a basket of these fruits to the place they worshipped and present them to the priest. In today's world, for those of us who are here today, or who might be listening to what I'm saying, our fruits do not come from crops we have labored over. Our fruits are not what we gather up, but in a basket or bring to church to be offered to God. Usually we get a paycheck and deposit that check in the bank, and that check represents our first fruits. And the checking and savings account is our basket. That's how... So the Hebrew people's offering to God was done as an act of faith and commitment. When making this presentation to God, the one presenting the gift was to engage in a spoken confession of yeah or his faith. This confession raised the might acts of God in the deliverance right from Egypt and the occupation of Canaan. 
And yes, this Jew reviewed grateful the national history, the Syrian origin, the Egyptian bondage, the exodus, the entrance into Canaan, and the first fruitfulness of the land of promise. All this history of God's goodness made the first fruit simply the expression of gratitude. It is on this grace that systematic beneficence is to be built. Nowhere else can a fitting foundation be found. That's why he says, starts by saying, a wandering Aramean was my father. You are describing where you have come from. Some of us who are here in Australia, we've got a background and where we've come from. I think a lot of people have got a background where they've come from. And they remember these stories. So in our world today, Thanksgiving is a time when we, through a variety of ways, give thanks for all the bound that we so like to have and then to share. At least that is what we are supposed to be doing. In reality, however, Thanksgiving has become for men just another day, our bed with the family. So the biblical principle of offering God a portion of our gold bound is not exactly on the minds of most people who gather today at Thanksgiving services. The biblical model is one in which the people of God remember how fortunate they are to be out of captivity in Egypt. They therefore act out of a genuine faith stance that shouts, Praise God from who all blessings flow. You are now thanking God. Or our thanksgiving to God is an action that is commanded by God. God commands the people to bring the offering of first fruits. It is important to take notice that by this command, the people are required to do something physical. They are required not only harvest the first fruits, they are required to pick up the crops, put them in a basket, and take them to the temple. They are required to do that. So they become part of the offering. But thankfulness is not just something we do or a gift we bring. Thankfulness is part of the quality of the life we live. Thankfulness should be a daily part of our living. Thanksgiving, therefore, is an attitude which acknowledges that God is absolute control of our lives. And only with that recognition can we approach God with a thankful heart. So the giving of the first fruit was a way for the people to say thank you to God and to acknowledge that without God they would have nothing. So it is a way of saying thank you God. For those of you who have a garden, there should be a special attraction to these verses. There's a great joy to those people who wait patiently for spring and then till the soil and plant the seeds. You watch and water and weed and hope that these tiny seeds will become something special. If you are lucky, in a short while, small shoots begin to break the surface of the soil and the dissipation of the harvest begins. There is great satisfaction in reaping that harvest and partaking of its bound. But our text from Deuteronomy says something about the Hebrew people. For the Hebrew people, giving thanks to God was much more personal than it is for most of us. We do not think of ourselves, for the most part, as people who have been delivered from slavery into freedom. Maybe a question to ponder this Thanksgiving day is whether or not 21st century people think of Thanksgiving as deliverance. The truth is that for the overwhelming majority of people, Thanksgiving is a day when we list the main things we have to be thankful for. But not to list those things that we have been set free from. Would maybe list the positive things we think God has blessed us with. When we acknowledge that our first fruits are probably a paycheck, the question becomes, how does that check become first fruit? Now the mama will go up that here comes another plea for money. The church is always looking for money. Yeah, well, sort of. Thankful has come to us as we ponder and appreciate those things in our lives that give us a sense of security and hope. But most people do not think about their good health or financial well-being or clothes on their backs, a roof over their head as the first fruits. Indeed, it could be said that some people actually think they are, they are owed those things from God simply because, well, because. 
You don't appreciate that you are in a roof. You are under a roof. When some people are sleeping in the streets, when some people don't have even a meal to eat, isn't that something you need to thank God about? When we stop and pray for recognize that everything we have in life, those things we have been delivered from and those things we put into our bank account come from God. One of two results come forward. We enter, we either feel we are actually the reason or for those things in life we could consider. Or we don't want to admit that God is the giver. Because we do not want to be beholden to God or to anyone else. And we don't think it comes from God. So the amazing thing that people of faith have discovered down through the ages that sacrificial giving back to God in thanksgiving doesn't really leave you poor. Martin Luther's experience speaks for them all. He said, I have held many things in my hands and I have lost them all. But what if I placed in God's hands that still I possess? Isn't that a great thinking? Many people don't want to say thank you because to say thank you says I am dependent on you. And sadly, most of us, even if you don't want to admit are self-centered enough that we do not want to be seen as depending on, on anyone or anything. Because we don't want to seem that we depend on anyone or anything. We even forget to think that God is the provider. Because we think we do it by our own means. So the truth is that saying thank you or better yet to admit that gratitude is a good thing is an action that has roots in grace. When we are truly grateful, we become keenly aware that we are totally dependent on God and upon one another. So when we are really grateful, we recognize that God has given us first fruits, whether we deserve them or not. He has given us those things. So thanksgiving on our part in our time should reflect the knowledge that we have already received from God far more than we can ever offer in return. So when you take inventory of your life, think about your life. You will discover that God has done much gardening in your life. There is a lot of things that have been done in your life. You will come to understand that God has been patient in tending to the needs of your life. And when you count your blessings, not only for this, even if you count a lot of down back in your past, you see that God has done a lot in your life. You will come to understand and appreciate that God has fashioned you and has provided for all your needs. You will come to accept that those needs may not always be met in a way that you would have them met. But you will come to know they are indeed met because God does what is good to us. In returning to our text, it is clear that the Israelites were finally taking possession of the land that God had promised them. They worked hard to get their crops they planted, establishing community. In doing so, planted their lives as well as their crops. They were laying the foundation for a new life of freedom in the foreign land. One can only imagine how busy those days must have been for them as they went about building new lives. One can imagine that they probably worked long, very hours, even double shifts every day and did so with a smile on their face. They might have been tempted to think that they now had made it. They must have thought all, all, all along those lines to do otherwise would be contrary to human behavior. So the crops are the best we have ever seen. Life is good. We can now live in on, on our own. Think about that guy who is always thought of the rich young man. Because he thought he has owned everything by his own. And he said, I think I'm going to rest now. My soul is going to rest. I think for the next 10 years, I'm not going to go into the field. But remember what the Bible says. He says, when he went to bed, he did not wake up. That is true. Because failure to give thanks to God will result in such things. But it appears that they did not get to fully of themselves, at least not at this point in their early history. I mean, how many times have we been tempted to rearrange our priorities to reflect a more selfish attitude? When things are going great, it is easy to slip into the self-deception of human pride. 
You, you think you're doing it, things are going very well, and you need to talk about it. And the added problem is that when it is good, we want more. We get even greedy. We want more. Our text reflects a different attitude. It is an attitude of gratitude. It is an attitude that says, before we get our fill, we need first to tell God, thank you, Lord. Before you have your meal, you need to say, thank you, Lord. Yes, they had been commanded to do so, but how often has that command been ignored by humankind? How often do we eat even without saying thank you? On this harvest thanksgiving service, let us begin to move into an understanding that we are always to give God our best effort in all things we do. When you think of the first fruit scenario, keep this in mind. The first fruits were the best and it was the biggest. It is often from that fruit that the best seed is removed and replanted for the next year. <laughs> so what does it say when we give our first fruit to God? What does it mean? It says we trust God with the best. Someone said, give God your best. Expect God's best. So that is a good notion to keep in mind. It would be a tragedy if we neglected the many blessings God has graciously entrusted to our care. We need on this special day to ask ourselves how it will be with us when God takes stock of our lives. God taking stocks of our lives. So the point is this. In 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6 and says, Whoever sows sparing will also reap sparing. And whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each must give as he had decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Isn't that great? We will be able to look into God's radiance and say that we have used the first fruits of our lives in a way that glorifies God. We'll be able to say, yes, we have used those gracious gifts wisely when we acknowledge that God's grace is in our lives and God's grace is with us. No matter how hard you have worked, no matter how deeply you are to, committed to providing yourself and those around you, no matter how dedicated you are to making a positive difference for people along the way, the fact still remains, there is nothing, listen, there is nothing that you own there is nothing that you have by your own efforts alone. Only God, only God can do that. So it is like the seed that he was planted and became part of the harvest of first fruits. The farmer works hard to prepare the soil and all the rest. But no matter how hard the farmer works, it is not the farmer that gives that seed life. It is our God who created the farmer and the seed who gives both life, the farmer and the seed. So it is God who created both those. So my brothers and sisters, we are a people who have been blessed. As you look around the world today, look with eyes of thankfulness. Let us see our blessings and not be jealous or selfish or self-centered. Let us this Thanksgiving service be a grateful people, a people that are thankful for our dependence on God saying thank you Lord so I would want to say yep thanksgiving to all of you what are you doing this thanksgiving I hope God is going to help you as you have prepared it in your heart what you are going to do on this harvest thanksgiving God bless you in Jesus name Amen let us pray. God of plenty, God of scarcity, we pray for this time of the year, the time of harvest, for a more harvest. We pray for those who hunger, less starvation, more diversity, less difference, more power, less dominance, more prayer, less religion, more riches, less wealth. More conversations, less words. 
more sharing, less dividing, more appreciation, more compassion, more love, and more love, and more love. God bless this harvest in Jesus' name. Amen. As you are thinking what you are going to offer to God, I'm just praying to you for this harvest thanksgiving. The account details, you will see them on the screen and be able just to say thank you, Lord. Whatever you think of offering is a blessing for you to do that. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we pray for the abundance of things that you have given us. We pray that you are the giver of everything that we have. For we have nothing without you. We pray for the first fruits that you have given us. Father, we thank you that now we realize that we are nothing without you. May you bless us, Father, as we remember, as you in encourage us just to come before you, as you have instructed in your ways that we should not come before you empty-handed, but we should bring something. This is the special day that God has made, and we are bringing our harvest thanksgiving. May you bless it, Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let us receive grace. God of plenty, be with us as we journey into the world. Sustain us that we may always work in your way and follow your example of justice, peace and love for all. We ask this through your son who resisted the temptation of the world. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all from now and evermore. Amen. Amen. God bless you all.